Hello everyone, my name is Ali and welcome to my channel. We are back with Hakuoki Kyoto Winds, but we are starting Sanon's route. I really am not looking forward to Sanon's route, but hopefully he can maybe change my mind. I don't know. So what I'm going to do is kind of like, is pretty much what I did with Nagakira's route, where I will, the first chapter, I'll just do all the answer choices, come back every time when there's a choice, because... It'd be, it's getting super repetitive doing seeing this part 500 times and all the first chapter anyway we have already done every single choice so there's nothing new probably around the second chapter which I'm guessing is best bet I'm going to start actually reading through it so let's go so with his route the first choice we're going to make is find a way to escape which we've already seen in other chapters so I will be back all right, choice number two, we're going to say stayed where I was, and I'll be back again. Choice three, we're going to put stay put, and I'll be back again. Okay, I didn't realize this. There's a choice that we have actually have not done yet, so we're going to do the wow, I had no idea. Kondo's view of Hijikata seemed at, so at odds with my own personal experience with him. Of course, though, Kondo is intimately familiar with him. I'm sure. So perhaps there's no way of knowing who this man really is. Wow, I had no idea. It's understandable. Those who do not know him often share a similar opinion. But Toshi may have his reasons as to why now is not the best time for you to leave the compound. You're bored, I know, but I have to ask you to hang on a little longer. Okay, I understand. He hadn't done much, to be honest, but Kondo's visit had cheered me up greatly. Of course, the conditions of staying in my room were left unchanged. However, the creature comforts of spending an afternoon drinking warm tea gave me some life. Creature comforts? What is that supposed to mean? All right, so I'm going to move on to the next, I think, maybe? Time stood still, shadows drifting along my wall. How long am I going to do this? I'm going to read a little bit longer. If it sounds familiar, then I'm just going to move forward. Solitude was proving detrimental to any glimmer of hope. My heart felt heavier at each moment. How lonely the wistful, forlorn mind can become. Okay, yeah, we've already read this part, so I'll be back. All right, this one we're going to do quietly return to my room, and I'll be back again. All right, this is our last choice for chapter one, and I'm going to say stay behind in the headquarters. I'll come back right when we hit chapter two. All right, chapter two. We made it. Now I'll just start reading from here. Even if I've already done the answer choice or something. No news of my father came forth the other day, and somber restlessness took hold of me. Originally, it seemed Hijikata granted me approval to accompany the captains on their rounds through Kyoto to search for my dad. Then he called me in. Excuse me. I saw Okita and Heisuke had been summoned along with me, and I felt a partial sense of relief. It did a little to calm my chattering nerves, and I didn't want to be in a bad spot with Hijikata. You called me? Hijikata seemed to be in a foul mood, so I decided it was best to act with tact in his presence. I was thinking about the search for Kodo, but maybe it's best to put a halt to it for now. What? But why? We just started looking for him. Stopping now would surely cause any of our leads to run dry. His words stunned me. How could he back out on this? Hijikata remained deeply composed. We have reports of activity from the Choshu, and they do not bode well for us. It would be highly dangerous for you to be out and about. I'd heard how the warriors of the Choshu Domain associate with the Imperial, Imperial Nationalist Party. For some reason, they find foreigners repulsive, using brute force to prevent any foreign presence. All of their faith is aligned with the Emperor. The Shinsengumi, on the other hand, serve the Shogun, meaning they are directly opposed. If the Choshu is active, it could mean that my own goal is of little concern to the Shinsengumi. I might become something of a burden to them. So, are you asking me to refrain from joining the rounds until things with the Choshu Domain settle? Hijikata nodded and turned towards the two men. 
That being said, as of right now, she is not to accompany any rounds with any captains. Oh, I get it now. That's why you pulled us in here, right? Heisuke seemed two steps behind Hijikata's words, until this very moment where it seemed to click. You know, she never caused any trouble during any round she joined us in. I kind of feel like it shouldn't be a problem if she tagged along. Yeah, even if something were to happen, as long as she doesn't get involved, it should be fine. I mean, it's not like she can run away from us if things get sticky, right? I won't run. I knew he wasn't being serious, but I couldn't stand to keep my mouth shut. I made up my mind the minute the men of the Shinsengumi agreed to help me find my father. I made a vow to never run from the Shinsengumi for as long as they helped me find my father. My desire to find my father showed no signs of slowing, of even since I first arrived in Kyoto. I will keep my vow. So please, please allow me to continue looking for my father. I bowed to Okita, keeping my eyes locked with his. His smirk, however, shrunk slowly as he gazed towards me, caught in between words to say. If you stay with us, you're putting yourself at risk. If you want that risk, feel free to join us. I mean, we have witness reports that fit the profile and description of Kodo. You may have a point, but are witness reports enough justification to put her in harm's way? What if you're wrong? What if she's exposed? Do none of you understand? You're placing an unnecessary burden on yourselves. I promise I won't cause any trouble. Please. If I lose the opportunity to search for my father, then the chances of finding him will sink. I lied prostrate before him, and Hijikata simply sighed heavily. <sighs> you better follow the orders of every captain you join. No ifs, ands, or buts. Am I clear? Yes, of course. Thank you so much. I didn't know how else to show my gratitude, so I bowed deeply again. I'm leaving it to your discretion over whether or not you're going to join them. That's on you. All right. I had to make sure this was the best decision. There was something in his demeanor that made me unsure of my desire to leave the compound. Still, if I was with Oka... Okata. Okata. We're going to combine everybody's name. Okita and Heizuke. I'm sure I'd be safe and well protected. On the other hand, my presence could be an undue burden on, to them. What do we do? We are going to, I think it says remain in the compound, right? Yes. Remain in the compound. After contemplating, I decided to stay in. I couldn't convince myself that I wouldn't be a burden to them during dangerous situations. Grrr. Still, it was disheartening to think about. <sighs> Another dull day spent inside. Throughout the past six months, I was allowed to finally search for my father on the rounds, and I felt like a part of the house by contributing. Even though sometimes I was occupied with cleaning or cooking, it seemed like I was serving my part to the Shinsugumi in a meaningful way. I spent most of my time with the captains, but... There were many opportunities to chat with the warriors and come to know them as real people. Maybe they were starting to think of me as a warrior in training rather than Hijikata's page. These worrying thoughts made me so anxious I was turning numb. The idea that I had become so dependent on the Shinsengumi at this moment. What should I do today? I was resigned to the consequences of my decision, something that felt like I was wasting away the tender moments of my life in these headquarters. I was, in short, with nothing to do. All right. I decided to enter the inner courtyard, where maybe I could feel a pleasant breeze tingle my face in the shade. The quaintness may calm me down. Damn it. Alas, no winds blew through the courtyard today. No reprieve from the harsh sun bearing down upon this dry emptiness. I had a feeling it was going to be a bad day. Shade was the best I could hope for, it seemed. My god, those are so annoying. I sighed, sitting in whatever shade I could find. Something occurred to me as the sun roasted Kyoto. Oh, right. My father's been here, hasn't he? They'd mentioned it, but they hadn't told me why. Was he tending to the injured or perhaps educating the Shinsengumi on how to avoid illness? 
maybe he'd intended to stay here long term. My father never mentioned to have been with the Shinsengumi. He'd visited only a few times, or so I had been told. If he'd really been their doctor, then he would have visited more often, which left me with the question, why? It was extremely clear to me that the Shinsengumi had plenty of secrets, but I grew suspicious that these secrets deeply implicated my father as well. No, that can't be right, can it? I shook my head again, trying my best to dispel the dark thoughts taking shape. Okay, I know who this is now. I uh, kind of cheated. I said it weird and because I got the sentence wrong, so I know this is Sanon. <laughs> so, yeah. Now we know. What can't be right? Ah! I spun around to find that Sanon had walked behind me, utterly undetected and unannounced. Oh, Sanon, is it all right for you to be walking around? Please, I'm no bedridden invalid. There is nothing wrong with me. There was a hint of coldness in his words. Although my left hand is something of an invalid. Er... I couldn't bear to look at the sad, twisted smile he gave me. His arm hadn't healed, and it seemed certain now that it never will. The rest of the captains seemed sure that he would never be able to use his arm as he'd done before. And what are you doing? Are you allowed out of your room? You haven't been given the run of our headquarters, I'm sure. Yes, I know. I'm sorry. They usually let me walk around as I pleased, so long as I don't go into anyone's room, but I knew that, technically, I was confined to my room. Any freedom given to me was simply a courtesy. In other words, Sanon was right. If he decided to chastise me for being in, a, in the courtyard, I had no reasonable response. There were some things I wanted to think about. I hoped the courtyard would be breezy. The moment the words were out of my mouth, I realized they sounded far more like childish excuses than an valid explanation. When you sneak about without permission, it makes it seem as if you have something to hide. I'm sorry. Still, I was beginning to grow accustomed to the subtle cruelty that seemed to accompany each word from Salon's mouth. All right. I'm going back to my room, then. I turned and began to walk away. Sanon's unpleasantness had started after he was wounded during our trip to Osaka. He spent most of his time locked in his room now, and he was quick to lash out on others in response. I knew the loss of his arm hurt him, more than I could understand, but I wished he could go back to being the warm, kind man he was originally. Um, I turned around to see him sta still standing there. It's really hot out today. You should try to stay out of the sun. Please, take care of yourself. I gave him a nervous little laugh, and he responded with a chuckle of his own. His smile didn't look forced. <laughs> Thank you. Take care of yourself as well. Okay. The Sanon I'd first met was still there. My spirits lifted. I ran back to my room. It was later that evening that the compound exploded with activity. I was walking down the hall when I heard footsteps and turned to see Nagakura coming towards me. Um, Nagakura? What's that for? He glanced down almost absently at his hands, holding a candle and an exceptionally long needle. One of the Choshu guys we picked up isn't talking. Hijikata's gonna talk to him personally, but he said he didn't have the right, uh, tools and sent me to get these. I don't understand. Er, look, kid. Ignorance is bliss, all right? Don't think about it too much. He gave another bark of laughter, turned his back on me, and walked off. I don't want to know what that was for. As the sun began to set, the activity in the compound reached a fever pitch. It was so busy that I couldn't even help with making dinner. The commotion was overwhelming. Run. Hey, Sake. He shot past my door, then wheeled back around. What happened? All the men are running around. Any word from that Choshu prisoner? Yeah, the guy finally broke. 
It looks like they're having a meeting right now. We're getting ready for a raid. Oh. Heisuke went to explain that the Shinsengumi would be splitting into two groups and searching locations at opposite ends of the city. Kondo would take 10 men to the Ikeda Inn, and Hijikata would take 24 to the Shikoku Inn. I heard they might be at the Shikoku. Gotta say, I'm kind of pissed the chief's sending me to the Ikeda. They'd send more men with Hijikata because they thought he'd be seeing action. Kondo and his men were to make sure they covered all of their bases. You mean there aren't even 40 men already? Yeah, kind of sucks because there's so many men who get sick when we need them the most. I'd known that the heat in close quarters made some men sick, but I hadn't known it was so many. Heisuke sighed. Ha. Huh. We sent word to the Aizu and the Judiciary Commissioner, but looks like they don't care. Looks like you've got your work cut out for you. Unfortunately, there wasn't much I could offer him apart from sympathy. I had a feeling it was going to be a difficult night. After all the men capable of fighting have left for their respective assignments, Sanon called for me. I'm sure it was only out of courtesy, but the chief has asked me to protect the compound. Sanon's passive-aggressive attitude reared its head. It's mostly empty, of course, but someone may try to attack us for that very reason. I must ask you to stay where I can see you. I may need to give you orders, should the worst occur. Okay. I hesitated a moment, then spoke. Does that mean you'll protect me? I wasn't sure why, but he laughed at that. <laughs> well, I should hope I'll be more used than the men who've been confined to their beds, at least. Was I supposed to be happy? His smile was so sad, I wasn't sure what to say. It seemed to hurt him most when the other men were out fighting, and all he could do was wait. The silence between us stretched out until the door to our room suddenly opened without a sound. Colonel Sanon, we've confirmed that the Choshu are meeting at Ikeda. The Ikeda Inn? Oh dear, that's less than desirable. The Shinsengumi has never been good with chance. His tone was light, but his face was serious, and with good reason. They had been certain Chikoku was the right location, and had sent only half as many men to Ikeda. Yamazaki, can you do me a favor? The man whom he'd called Yamazaki nodded curtly. He is the Shinsengumi officer and spy, as well as a member of the Watch. Despite not living in the Yagi residence, he is aware of my situation. First, go tell Hijikata that the enemy is meeting at Ikeda. He should still be on his way to Shikoku. And I'm sorry to trouble you with it, but I need you to take this child with you as well. Wait! Yamazaki seemed just as surprised. We are going to say... I'll go. I'll go. Please let me help you guys. If I really could help, then I wanted to. I'd lived with these men for almost half a year. They'd fed me, given me a roof over my head, and helped me look for my father. Buddy bye. Ah, uh, it looks like you're ready for this. I don't mean to be rude, Colonel, but if all you need is a message delivered, I can handle it. Yamazaki's cold eyes slid over me for a moment as he spoke. There may be Ronin out to intercept you. And besides, there is a chance that Choshu has reinforcements. If your message were to be intercepted, then you will be sure not to reach Ijikata in time. Sonan finished with the soft smile I hadn't seen him use for weeks. Do you see what I'm trying to say? Yes. If the worst should happen, I can hold off any Choshu Ronin and give her the message. What? It sounded as if they were suggesting if things went badly, Yamazaki would sacrifice himself. Yes, of course. I doubt it will come to that. We're short of men right now, which means there's more I need you to do. You'll need to notify the Aizu and Judiciary Commissioner as well. 
that would have Yamazaki running all across Kyoto. I suppose it really drove home just how thin the Shinsengumi was stretched. And there's no other person that could do this job? Um, what about Shimada? Shimada is another Shinsengumi spy who is trusted enough with the knowledge of my situation. Sanon shook his head. The Shinsengumi need every single member they can get, and Shimada was with the Shikoku team. Which means that, apart from Yamazaki, I was the only one that could possibly serve as a messenger at the moment. You're Yukimura, right? I heard you know a little about how to protect yourself. Y yes, I do. Unfortunately, I can't guarantee your safety. If you can manage, you're welcome to join me. If I tried to run away while we were out, I had no doubt that he would kill me without hesitation. This mission is his priority, not my life. Even so, I'll go. I can take care of myself. You don't need to worry about me. Sonon gave a small smile. I knew he wanted to join the battle more than anyone, but we both knew that wasn't possible. The least I could do was carry out my mission. Very well. I accept your request, Colonel. He bowed, then as he stopped, stepped out of the room, he turned to me. Run with all your might. I'm going to let you guys go here. I hope you are enjoying, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!